музикою, що тріпотить на вітрі вицвілим прапорцем, який трискотить притишено у видоленку і на горбі. Усім нам хочеться пливти. Це значить прибути там. Я сиджу і дивлюсь на океан, сидячи в теплій Тойоті, як забиратиме всіх нас в кишеню свою океан, кожному дасть покетові і навіть по пророкові йоні. Вірші, тому не лише слова, не лише форми елегій, вірші, не лише зима, яку пережуємо у двох. Вони, ці слова, розщеплюються на рівні молекул води океану або озера, по якому пройшовся Бог. Я тому кажу, що самому потрібно пливти і самому брести край берега і знати, чому ці грубі нитки плахт вишикавано в ряд в строгій ширензі псалому, бухті овечої голови з парусами і ніздрями яхт. Я тому й кажу, що пір з щайками і принагідні містечка, ці вірші, які змиває час, океан, рука, запінена хвиля, ці двоколісні ровери, срібні колеса і зеленчливі сердечка зникають з власниками швидкості на прибережних схилах. Тому ці останні дні заливає Океан до мого чутливого вуха, коли він шумить спідницями жінок, загуляючи їм литки, поруч смажать каштани, збирать цих плодів і кухар, поруч сонми метеликів, що сіли на тінь руки. Океан каже тобі, дивись на лопатки і перетинки крилиць, на цих метеликів, що зникнуть і до завтра не долетять. Але сьогодні вони словом твоїм накрились. Просто перед океаном прощально так лопотять. Looking out at the ocean, butterflies flutter while those that still remain in autumn, they leave this bay slicing through like the blade of a knife, Flying over the waves in colorful scarves and moccasins, they fall into hollows, into deep air pockets. Like a dancer who cuts a pas de deux with scissor-like feet, or a swimmer who carries words into the ocean, everyone who flies must stop at some point and fall. So we all strive to stay the course, alone. There in the heart of light, as soft as Christmas bread, glued wings pressed together like a violin's veneer, the last solitary rowers of the season leave the bay and close all the doors. We all want to be a solitary rower, a poem that is written and gets caught in the throat. Music that flutters in the wind like a faded flag that crackles softly in a valley or on a hill. We all want to sail, to be out there. I sit and look at the ocean from my warm Toyota. How will the sea gather all of us in its pocket and offer us a whale's worth or even Jonah's worth? Poems are not just words not just elegiac forms. Poems are not just a winter that we suffer through together. They are broken down, these words, to the level of molecules, of ocean water, of lakes upon which God walked. So I say you must sail on your own. Make your way around the coast by yourself and learn why these coarse threads are lined up like psalms in strictly formed rows on the sails and bows of yachts in Sheepshead Bay. So I say that the piers with seagulls and occasional towns, these poems that are washed away by time, the ocean, a hand, a foamy wave, these two-wheeled cruisers, silver wheels and split hearts, disappear with the masters of speed on the coastal slopes. So the ocean flows into my sensitive ears on these autumn days when it rustles women's skirts exposing their calves. Nearby chestnuts are roasted by their collector and cook 
next to a flock of butterflies that landed in the shadow of my hand. The ocean tells you to look at the membranes and patterns on the wings of these butterflies that will disappear and never fly tomorrow. But today they are shielded by your word and here by the ocean, they only flutter their goodbyes. Next poem, <clears throat> Zuloni Budyaka, z poezji, z Zuloni Budyaka, kovtaju pyl zemlí i poroch svitla, dyrjave serce, vtomlena ruka, ruka dyrjava, vtomlena rika, papír holodný, ale ručka syta. I Budyakom okom, jak pastuch, Пантрую пагорб і зелені схили, Загуслих у смолі осінніх мух, Перину світла й чорний капелюх, Відрікшись від обітниці і схими, Тягну на собі із останніх сил, Я розтібаю золостистий гудзик, Дірявім серці барбарисий кизил, В руці дірявий діамант роси, І литі зерна сну і кукурудзи, Я знаю, що в долоні будяка, прихований марлею накрити, біле вапно сухого молока, колючий погляд і тонка ріка, як розкіш волоцюгий сибарита. Якщо долоні мають будяки, якщо ріка молочна і кисільна, то світять нам нью-йоркські маяки зі всіх сторін, зі схилів будь-яких в діряве серце. Velmi nenadějné. From a thistle's palm. From poetry. From a thistle's palm. I swallow the dirt of the earth and the dust of the light. Shattered heart, weary hand. Shattered hand, weary river. The paper is hungry, but the pen is full. With a thistle's eye, like a shepherd, I scan the hill and green slopes, thickened by the resin of autumn flies, pale feather bed and a black hat, renouncing vows and dogma. On my last legs, I carry the burden of myself. I undo the golden button. In my shattered heart, barberries and dogwood. In my shattered hand, the diamond of dew casting seeds of dreams and corn. I know that in the thistle's palm, hidden and wrapped in gauze, are the white remnants of dried milk, looking prickly, and a thin river like the pleasure of a vagabond or a sybarite. If palms have thistles, if rivers are milky and sour, then New York beacons flash from all directions, from random slopes into shattered unreliable hearts. Tbilisi. One more poem from Vasil, and then we'll have some conversation okay. with them, and, and then we'll read some more. Okay. Uh, в Тбилиси. В тбилисских двориках, занедбанных, шовковиц, достиглий запах, зголосних шовкових, із виноградних ліній алфавіту, з дерев'яних прибудов житла. Почнуться нам на кілька днів життя дощі прив'ялі і втрачені століття. Готелю провулку схожий на мізинець, тут вулиці заправлені бензином, пси, прохачі, музики, співаки у ранішнім дощі завислім над горою. Так наче хтось проїхався арбою по вигладжених каменях міських, ти чуєш рин виспів, та піяння курей, і мову мешканців, і рипання дверей, грудзинок в чорнім одязі, жалоби. Вони живуть в тих двориках за склом, вони зрослись із внутрішнім двором, із простором шовковиці і втоми. 
у дворику, збираються на ранок, показують на дах, на поржавілу ринву, по шовковиці. Шовковиця прикрила трьох дітей, сусідка в чорному зіперлась об одвірок, джмелині дж їх мови перевірю, і мову їх душу, і мову їх курей, їх вірші, на закінчення, їх закінчення на швілі, на дзе, на ані, їх двори просілі, їх вулички криві на півсолодких вин. Яке століття, я себе питаю, коли птахи нічні перелітають, а листя виростає із трави. In Tbilisi. In the neglected courtyards of Tbilisi, the scent of ripe mulberries from the silky vowels in the vineyard rows of the alphabet among wooden shacks. We began a few days in our lives, guided by rains and lost centuries. The hotel in the alley looks like a finger. The streets here are seasoned with gasoline. Dogs, beggars, music, singers. In the morning, rain hovers over the mountain as if someone had driven a wagon over the warm city cobblestones. I hear chatter in the coop, songs and drinking, the language of city folk and creaking doors, Georgian women in black morning clothes, They live in their homesteads behind glass, where inner courtyards offer space for spreading mulberries and weariness. From the courtyard, they are going to the market. They point to the roof, the rusty gutter. The mulberries shelter three little children. A neighbor in black leans on a doorpost. The bumblebee, zh. I'll study this cluster, the language of rain, the language of roosters. Their poems end in shvili, z, and ani. Their courtyards are shabby. Their streets are curved, semi-sweet wine glasses. What century is this, I ask myself, when birds migrate at night and leaves grow from the grass? Uh, so we've prepared um, a few questions for uh, both the uh, poet and the translator. Um, and uh, I, I thought I would just start with a question for Vasil. Thank you so much, Omar. Um, Vasil, um, among many other things, These poems seem to be deeply connected to the New York landscape and seascape. Did you begin work on them after you arrived in America? And what is it about this landscape that speaks to you? Has it helped um, with your transition in living here? Thank you. Um, it's a very interesting question because Uh, after my arriving to the United States, I published uh, my first <coughs> book. Um, uh, title is was uh, 38 poems uh, about New York. Uh, I strongly remember uh, gospel of uh, all European poets. Uh, that book uh, by Federico Garcia Lorca, poet in New York. I describe um, and discover new space in New York. It's for me, it's uh, like a uh, uh, newborn, right? Like, like, a, like a poet, because I see bridges, uh, Uh, New Yorkers, uh, seagulls, uh, skyscrapers, and I, I see what, what is that? What, what is the landscape? Um, and uh, I think, okay, I will be right about New York. 
I will be create Ukrainian New York because I write in Ukrainian language. It will be some kind of Ukrainian New York, right? Um, today, um, probably that uh, New York's landscape is uh, completely different for me. Not only urban, but I often uh, went to shore of the ocean and I see forward to east uh, through Atlantic Ocean, right? I think, okay, I must see my Ukraine, right, in my identification. But uh, that ocean is a, some kind of symbol, of metaphor. Uh, and the uh, title of this book, Paper Bridge, it's a, a situation that writer, that's me, myself, right, want to describe and create new uh, reality and build from, from the words. Uh, because you know that uh, if you live uh, that uh, uh, if you live outside your motherland, you may be uh, looking for balance between uh, your uh, current situation your language and your future like a writer, right? It's a very, very different situation that many, many writers, especially Czesław uh, Milos, Polish uh, poet, or uh, I don't know, Derek Walcott, or who arriving to USA thinking the same because that, that very, uh, it's a, uh, some kind of uh, looking for new language of your writing. That, that new language, that one of that uh, I take from that New York landscape and creating some ocean from the walls. <laughs> Thank you. That's so so interesting to hear a little bit about that process and how it works for you. Um, Elena, uh, speaking of landscapes, how does this translation fit into the landscape of Ukrainian literary translation, and how has um, that world changed uh, since the war began in 2014? Um, and also, have you seen a shift since the um, acceleration of the war last year? Thank you. Um, well, I would like to say that Vasil's poetry, although it is definitely part of the Ukrainian literary landscape, is also part of a in very international and world landscape. He addresses and has dialogue with poets outside of Ukrainian poets, um, such as Derek Walcott and Philip Larkin. And um, the, tra the literary translation landscape has definitely changed since the war began in 2014. One important anthology that was published uh, right after uh, 2014 was Words for War by Oksana Maximchuk and Max Rosachinsky. And um, several of those poets featured in the anthology now have collections of their own in English published. And it, the situation definitely accelerated um, with the uh, desire to have things translated from Ukrainian and have Ukrainian uh, translations from Ukrainian available after the uh, full-scale Russian invasion in, on February 24th. Um, so th uh, some examples are Marko Andrichik had an anthology, White Chalk of Days, which was now uh, picked up by Penguin Random House in the UK and is republished. Um, Katarina Kazimirova, who's in our audience, <laughs> is uh, working on an anthology of Ukrainian writers published um, in English. 
and I think that's due to come out very soon. Um, and uh, there's also a desire for Ukrainian Americans to express their feelings about the war and to bring, um, I guess, visibility of Ukrainian culture to uh, fellow Americans. And uh, for example, with Poets of Queens, we published, and Yar Arts Group, we published an anthology, Ukrainian American Poets Respond, and that featured different Ukrainian American writers, including Vasil, um, who spoke about the war in Ukraine. Um, Thank you. I'm so happy to see this, you know, the, the blossoming. Um, I think that we in America need so badly to have more translated literature and the more of it we can get, the better. So it's exciting to hear, you know, how things are changing and, um, and getting and just accelerating. Yeah, it's exciting though for what Plumman, uh, I just, I didn't say that I'm really excited by what Plumman Press is doing as well with different writers and I'm so excited that um, Vasil's book was published with them. Well, we are too, thank you. Um, Vasil, um, I, speaking about the war, um, I, I noticed in this book that you don't refer directly to the war very much in these poems, um, but I have the sense it, it's, um, that it's woven deeply within them, of course. Um, can you tell us how this is so um, and has the recent full-scale invasion changed your relationship to the work? Um, of course, uh, after February 24, um, Ukrainian literature and the Ukrainian society have changed. Um, in the first day of war, I wrote poem titled War, and Olena immediately translated. And for a couple of days, that Los Angeles Book Review of, book, uh, Review of Books published that poem, this poem. Um, uh, during first two months, I wrote cycle about war, psalm, psalm, in Ukrainian, psalma. No, not psalm, uh, psalma, it's a, a different word. And uh, in uh, November 6, in New York, we have uh, premiere, world premiere um, performance in uh, Off-Broadway Theater, uh, Soho um, Playhouse Theater. Uh, this uh, performance based on my poems about war. Um, I know that many Ukrainian poets uh, uh, have uh, many poems about war. And I think that will be uh, that this situation in, in Ukrainian literature uh, continue um, world tradition. We remember about a uh, poem about uh, f from uh, Hioma Polinar about war or Georg Trakl, and uh, I think that that uh, in my case. Uh, that, that book, right, we start, um, uh, Olena started translated in 2018, before war, right? And we continue four years uh, working on, on the text, and, and uh, in the result we have a book, beautiful book. And uh, um, I think in that, um, um, war, now, for every Ukrainian heart, uh, is a very important theme uh, for poet as well. 
Thank you. Um, Elena, uh, I wanted to know more generally what motivated you to translate Paper Bridge um, and whether being a poet in your own right um, made that process easier or more difficult or maybe both? Well, I met Vasil back in 2004 when I moved to New York uh, for the MFA program at Columbia. And um, I, since I was in New York, I had the opportunity to hear him read live many times. So that was exciting. And I always felt drawn to his work. But it wasn't until, as Vasil mentioned, 2018, when I translated the poem Paper Bridge for a feature that I was doing on Ukrainian poets for a journal, Lock Raven Review. And um, of course, I wanted to include Vasil, so I translated Paper Bridge, and I really felt connected to it. And I think, um, going into the second part of the question, um, I, I choose things to translate that I feel connected to in the way that um, I feel like I can add uh, some aspect of creativity to my translation. Um, so, for example, in Vasil's work, um, there were many images that I felt it, that it took some, uh, a little bit of creativity in English to tie them together in a way that was interesting and um, almost like a puzzle, like fitting the pieces together to form the English language poem. Um, I think when I'm looking for things to translate, I sometimes find stuff that mirrors my own poetry, but oftentimes I find something that is more opposite of it, and I guess opposites attract, and I, I'm like attracted to what is opposite my, my work in translation because I wouldn't be able to write it myself, so it's, it's a lot of fun to, to go for the translation. That's great. Thanks, Elena. Um, I have one more question for you, Vasil, and then maybe we'll read a few more poems and then open it up um, for questions. Um, so I wanted to say, um, in, your, in your poem that we just heard um, from a thistle's poem, the one that, that I read, the wonderful translation of, um, you talk about shattered hearts. Um, but Ilya Kaminsky, in his um, introduction to Paper Bridge, which I recommend you all read, it's short and really, um, really wonderful, um, talks about the sense of hope that is in your poems, um, which he finds endlessly moving, he says, and he describes as a kind of poetry that we need. Um, so I wondered if you felt hopeful when you were writing these poems, um, or is your heart one of the shattered ones? Um, and, or maybe do you hold both of these feelings at the same time? It's a big question. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the short answer. <laughs> Uh, poetry always on the edge of hope, and um, poetry is an opportunity for hope. Um, in my opinion, um, uh, because uh, this is the, how this world build, this world build from small details and from hope. Why? Because every human being and every uh, poems search linked between world inside and outside. Thank you. All right, um, I think actually I'm passing back the mic um, to Vasil. Ось тобі хліб на прожиток і плащик ріки на руці на пшеничному полі Жито, а на житньому пшениці, а ще тобі дещо до хліба, дорога, 
ріка, пагорб, схил, світла до твого сліду, повітря для твоїх крил. А ще тобі, що тобі, нащо? Все інше тебе знайде, сунеться з рук твоїх плащик, і ріка тебе перейде, і камінь тобі за подушку, і берег ріки нічліг, метеоритову смужку прокреслено на чолі. Ось маєш пшеницю з житом, і маєш капусту і горох, журитися і не тужити. Ключ, двері, замок. То хто так подбав про тебе, так щедро тобі вділив цю річку, прошиту небом, і двері тобі привідкрив. You have it all. You have bread to sustain you and the cloak of the river of your arm. In the wheat field, rye, and in the rye field, wheat. And you have come thin to go with your bread, the road, the river, the hill, the slope, light for your footsteps, wind for your wings. And what more do you need? Everything else will find you. Your cloak will slip from your arms, and the river will pass you by. And the stone will be your pillow, and the river bank your bed. A comet's tail will be etched upon your brow. And so, and so you have wheat and this rye, and you have cabbage and peas. No worries, no sorrow, a key, a door, a lock. So, who took care of you and was so generous? Who pierced the river with the sky and opened the door for you? Uh, this poem, uh, this like for my wife, but <laughs> I'm so sorry. Одна. І можна на Ісла Негра, а можна на білій яхті жити, повітря проламується, яма на ямі, і та, що мене любила, і та, що тепер не любить, і та, що спільне майно від мене відсудить, і та, що любила музику, і та, що вдавала музу, і та, у якої погляд зеленої кукурудзи, і та, що мене хотіла, і та, що мене дурила, і та, що вночі вставала і цілу ніч курила, і та, що казала, не знаю, і та, що уникла шлюбу, і та, що носила кітель, а потім лисячу шубу, і та, що мені годила, і та, що мене тримала, і та, що тепер поїде восьмим швидким трамваєм, і та, на губі якої молоко ще не обсохло, і та, яку бачив на Гринич, і ту, яку бачив на Сого, і та, що казала, приїде, і не була в Белграді, і та, як, яку, як монетку, я залишив в Гранаді, і та, котра мала квартиру, але не мала щастя, казала, що сповідається, але казала не часто, і та, що писала вірші, і та, що співала в барі, і та, що мені ніколи не пасувала до пари, і та, що слухала, слухала Коена, а інша любила кіна, і те, що кричала, ще приповзеш на колінах, і те, що мене забула, і те, що вже померла, і те, що була медом, а потім щорніла, як мерва. І можна в старечому домі, а можна у віршах, яма над головою, і під ногами ширша є, і ті, що колись любила, і ті, що садила квіти, і ті, що дивилась на мене, які в неї будуть діти, і ті, що тебе просила, і ті, що тебе прогнала, і ті, що на колінах книжку твою тримала. 
the one. And maybe we can live on Isla Negra or a white not yacht. The air shatters, a chasm within a chasm. And the one who loved me and the one who doesn't anymore and the one who will sue me over common property and the one who liked music and the one who stifled my muse and the one who has the gaze of green corn and the one who wanted me and the one who betrayed me and the one who got up and smoked all night and the one who said she wasn't sure and avoided matrimony and the one who wore a uniform and then a fox fur and the one who pleased me and the one who held me and the one who will now take the number eight express tram and the one on whose lips the milk has not yet dried and the one who I saw in Greenwich Village and the one I saw in Soho and the one who said she'd come and never made it to Belgrade and the one who I left like a coin in Granada and the one who had an apartment but was unlucky and said she was hopeful but not often and the one who wrote poems and the one who sang in a bar and the one who wasn't at all right for me and the one who listened to Cohen and the other who liked films and the one who yelled, you'll crawl back to me on your knees and the one who forgot about me and the one who already died and the one who was like honey and then turned rotten. And it's possible in an old folks home or maybe in poems to have a grave before you and the ground opening beneath your feet for the one who loved you once and for the one who planted flowers and for the one who looked at you, what would her kids be like? And for the one who asked you and for the one who rejected you and for the one who held your book in her lap. Thank you. Dost u New York. Working? Working? Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Dost u New York. Chora, New York, doschelo, i nini doschet. Svitev, do pivnu, či ne spav, bo i dosh ne spet. Rozdivljavsia tvoje lastovenja na znimci, olivke očej, a v mene malinovej kušč. Znovu psili drozde, Затіяли бійку якусь, шурхотіли, наче пісок у нирці. І я шурхотів паперами, читав про Єгуду, клявся тобі й божився, що більше не буду вставати о третій ранку і писати ці двадцять віршів твоїх і для тебе. Знаю, що в нашому домі темно, але ми не маємо дому, то на що нарікати? Я також читав під дощем на Вашингтон-сквер, Листки розмоклися, вірші вітер затер. Я напружував пам'ять, бо забував рядки, міцно тримав в лівій руці парасолю. Ти була тим дощем і затяжною грозою, перестудою, кашлем, браслетом з руки. Ну а вчора знову прийшли до мене дощі, малював коло молодшій дочці, не дозвонився до старшої, довгі гудки. І тому книги читання, дощ і дрозди – та ще бурштин ластовиння, і ти, і колір твого волосся глиняної ріки. Я прикрив книжку, вклавши листок як закладку, вимкнув світло, розв'язав на шиї кроватку, чув, як хитався дім і електричні дроти. Нью-Йоркський дощ потрапляв за комір. А чому він так, як голка, серце коле? І чому не видно над домом твоєї звізди? Rain in New York. It rained in New York yesterday, and it is raining today. I kept a light on until midnight. Didn't sleep, because the rain didn't sleep. I looked at your freckles in the photo, your olive-like eyes. My raspberry bush is full of blackbirds again, fighting, rustling about like a stone in a kidney. And I rustled the papers, read about Yehuda. I swore to you and to God that I wouldn't get up at three in the morning to write anymore. These 20 poems about you are for you. I know that it's dark in this house, but we don't have a home, so what is there to complain about? I also read in the rain in Washington Square. The pages got wet. The wind tore at my poems. 
I strained my memory because I forgot the lines, tightly holding an umbrella in my left hand. You were that rain and the lasting storm, a cold cough, a bracelet on your arm. Well, yesterday, the rain came again. I drew a circle for our youngest daughter. I didn't get through to the older one, endless ringing. And so I read a book of rain and blackbirds, of amber freckles and you, the color of your hair like a river of clay. I closed the book, leaving a bookmark. I turned off the light, loosened my tie, felt the house and electrical wires shake, and the New York rain seeped through my collar. Why does it prick my heart like a needle? And why can't I see your star above our house? Паперовий міст. Ось кімната, крісло і порожній стіл. Її не можеш на спині нести, ні накрити рукописи, ні сховати. Сон звільняє мене, не пиши. За дверима серпень по шерх, залітає пісок до кімнати. Ось дорога, Long Island Railroad. Це повітря мені забиває рот, десь попереду край землі, монток. І якщо рукописом крито берег, світ живих чайок і померлих, їхніх гнізд заритих в пісок. Ось ця книжка, яку я пишу собі, уночі пишу, лежу в траві, зранку збираю листки, шукаю нитку, або ж камінці, або ж слова. Залізниця, вигоріла трава, все одно митареві чи митнику. Ось із дому виносять тінь стола, потім крісло, а потім трава проріже підлогу, стіни і мур. Шелестять крила, репить папір, в оці чайки синій сапфір, в очі яструба перламур. А ти виносиш рукопис і йдеш у бік, залізниці, ось потяг пробіг, уповздовж каміння й пташини гнізд, у поздовж літер і сторінок, до підземних криниць, до небесних річок викладаєш з паперу міст. Paper bridge. Here is a room, a chair and a bare table. You can't carry it on your back or cover it with a manuscript or hide it. Sleep frees me. Stop writing. Outside the door, August is ablaze. Sand flies into the room. Here is a road, the Long Island Railroad. I choke on the air in my mouth. Somewhere ahead is the Earth's edge, Montauk. And the beach is like a manuscript, a world covered with living and dead seagulls their nests buried in the sand. Here is the book I am writing for myself. I write at night, lying in the grass, collecting pages in the morning. I search for a thread or stones or words. The train station, burnt grass, it's all the same, a conductor or a customs agent. Here the shadow of the table is carried out then a chair, and then grass, cutting across the floors, the walls, and concrete. Wings rustle, paper crackles in the seagull's eyes, blue sapphire, in the hawk's eyes, mother of pearl. And you carry your manuscript toward the train station. Here the train runs past stones and bird's nests, past letters and pages to underground wells and celestial rivers as you build a bridge out of paper. Thank you. That was wonderful. One more. Yeah, let's just hold on to that in case. Yes. Okay, so does anyone have any questions?
Did you intentionally omit the last stanza of Odna? Or did you just forget about it? Because it kind of wraps yeah. it all up. <laughs> uh, you know, it's um, poetry imagination. Uh, I often said to my wife, because my uh, poetry about Lao, uh, she uh, understands very deeply, and she knows about me everything, and <laughs> uh, it's very hard. Uh, but um, yes, it's uh, it's. Uh, probably for my whole life experience. <laughs> uh, but, but some kind of symbolic, because if, uh, if you read or understand the last lines of stanzas, this is, uh, I'm talking about death. It's uh, many, many women. It's... Uh, way to death and for um it's for me that um i think that that uh, every poet uh look in balance between life and death it's uh, probably the main theme of the poetry, literature, and our being on this earth. So we didn't screw it up. <laughs> no. Does anyone have another question? Thank you. Um, I have two questions, uh, one for Fazil and one for Elena. Um, <clears throat> earlier this year, for Australia, it released My Hollywood, which uh, besides being a, a book of original Ukrainian-American poetry, it's also a, uh, a small anthology of, of translation. Uh, Ukrainian poets, but also uh, Russian poets and Armenian poets. Um, do you see yourself, when you're writing in the United States, as, as part of uh, a sort of Eastern European exile, or is, does and and if if so or if not, does writing in Ukrainian make that different as opposed to writing in Russian? Um. Okay, if I clearly understand, uh, you asking me about uh, uh, how being uh, Ukrainian poet in 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 uh, America and for right. different yes. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, um, many years ago, I uh, we together with one of the great Romanian <coughs> writer Norman Mania, uh, we uh, uh, will be in in subway and going to home, and Norman asked me. Man, do you know what is the two East European writer doing in this crazy country? Uh, I think, okay, we're right now in the subway. Um, uh, okay, my question to you. Uh, what do you mean about uh, uh, some writers of uh, lost generation, Hemingway uh, or Dos Passos or, or uh, uh, um, Fitzgerald? They are lives many years in Paris. What do you mean that American writers are French?
Yes, uh, yes, that's a very important that language. Language linked to you uh, to your homeland and your imagination, background, etc., etc. Yes, of course, uh, they're very important for me, New York landscape. It's very important to some kind of uh, American uh, literary life or, or I don't know, jazz, music, etc., etc. But language, it's... Um, uh, it's uh, uh, that main uh, for for that that uh, uh, for every writer it's uh, like motherland, L yes, like uh, uh, air. If you, you know, okay. Can I just add to that? Um, yeah. I just wanted to say that I think because Vassil lives in the U.S., it only adds more depth to his poetry because he is um, really touched by writers that he probably wouldn't meet in Ukraine, living in Ukraine. Um, even the Romanian writer that he mentioned, maybe he wouldn't have met him if he was still in Ukraine. Yes. Yeah. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Elena for inviting me to this uh, book reading. I met Elena in Tbilisi, I think it was in 2017. Yeah. And uh, so my question springs from that as well as the previous question. As I was scanning the table of contents, I noticed that uh, there is a poem entitled Tbilisi, one in Paris, one in Berlin. There is a poem about Derek Walcott, and there's one which is kind of a homage or a history of English poetry, which really talks about Philip Larkin. And so my question is, you are Ukrainian living in the US. I am a Mauritian, I'm from a small island who's lived in the US for a long time. And I ask myself that question, which I'm asking you. To what extent are we not what we, not the language we write, but the world view we have, the way the perspective we bring to an issue? To what extent that is cosmopolitan, international? For instance, you know, there's this talk about Philip Larkin, Derek Walker. What are the, the non-Ukrainian influences on your worldview and in your poetry? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I visit Ukraine every year. One time on the year or two times. Um, I think that uh, today, yes, uh, in Ukraine, uh, I read about myself is a, Vasil Makhno is a cosmopolitan writer, <laughs> non-Ukrainian, Ukrainian-American, American writer. It's a, that's, uh, I think that uh, in Ukraine, um, uh, do you, Ukraine and Ukrainian society and Ukrainian culture during uh, many, many years uh, was uh, some kind of uh, colonial culture. And we have many problems with uh, connection to world. And uh, today, this Russian-Ukrainian war, um, they explain that many problems in Ukrainian society and uh, uh, global society uh, linking or, or working together about about 
uh, understanding what do you want Ukrainians? Why we struggle with Russian? Why uh, we need independent state, right? Um, as for me, uh, I uh, always uh, have answer on that similar question that uh, many of writers who was born in Asia, Africa, or I don't know, South America, and many of them live in England, Paris, uh, France, etc. And uh, yes, it's a, uh, it's a writing in transition, of course. And uh, mm, many of them used uh, English or French. Is it, is it, is it not that uh, own language or native language for, for these writers? But in French, yes, divided. The French writers and Francophonian literature, right? But in English literature, I don't know what is that, uh, Abduzak Hurna, what is that? It's a Nobel Prize in, in, in 2021. What is that? Uh, he, cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan, he is a non English writer or he is a Tanzanian writer. Uh, for example, that Samuel Beckett is an Irish man who writes in, in English and French. What is that? I don't know. That's some identification for every writer that, as for me, it's my point of view, uh, it's a language. Uh, of course, in our global world, uh, there's many, many uh, nuances are changed. And we have, we, we must be have uh, a new vision on the writing, on the language, on the global society, or the cosmopolitan, and the uh, national, national identity. Yes, it's a, it's a, uh, your question is very good because every time I'm asking myself about that. Thank you, uh, Vasil. I feel like I hear a strong sense of longing in your writing or your images about um, place and uh, New York. And I just wonder if there's any any sense of displacement that you feel that you could address. Uh, <laughs> um, I think about home. Where is my home? In USA, in Ukraine, by the ocean, or <laughs> everywhere. Um, I'm not a displaced person. Um, I told again the my home is in my language first i would like to thank vasil and I found this book ideal for my Ukrainian-American family because we can read it simultaneously and enjoy your poetry simultaneously. So thank you so much. And my question is about your cooperation and about your uh, mutual understanding of poetry. 
Did you, Elena, ask Vasil for clarification of some pieces, or did you find your way to a translation just wi without Vasil's help? Did you, Vasil, um, accept Olena's translation, or did you have some suggestions and, you know, some poems, uh, you know, turn to be your kind of a mutual uh, work on the translation? If you can open up your secrets, se secrets of your uh, mutual uh, work and cooperation, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, Vasil was very open to my questions, and um, there were some tough words that were very specific to a certain part, point in Ukrainian culture um, or a certain, uh, just um, certain places even. Um, so he was very open to my questions, definitely. Um, every time I send a couple poems to Olena and um, I think they're okay if she accepted that and will translate it, okay. If no, okay also. <laughs> that uh, I'm very open for, and my cooperation with my translators, at Olena as well, uh, <coughs> very difficult because some of them translate my essay, some of them my novel, and some in couple <coughs> translators uh, translate my uh, poem into English, right? But with Olena, I have enjoyed from this co cooperation because we was on the one wave. <laughs> and I, just wanted to also, I just wanted to add to that that we also had a wonderful process um, with both of you um, in editing um, the the work and and. Um, having a dialogue back and forth about various word choices, and and you both were so open and um, ready to engage in that process, which is so pleasurable. And so, you know, you talk about um, your home being in your language, and I think that when we un when we undertake this kind of process together, you know, we all are sharing a home as well. Um, in the language and in, in the words you make, in the words you find in English, um, and then in the, in the process of back and forth. You know, it's almost um, Talmudic for those of you who know what that means. You know, it's like um, a discussion about the, what's the idea and what does it mean and, and what were you really trying to get at. And, um, and that's just a wonderful process and especially with, you know, such deep, um, thoughtful poetry. So thank you, thank you both for engaging with us in that process. We both enjoyed it very much. Thank, thank you, Rich. I would thank like you. to um, second that in a sense, because sometimes in this business, you're dealing with people that have very strong egos and are very close-minded and are not open to suggestions. But uh, this team was incredible. Uh, yes, here, here. It was an absolute Thank pleasure you. working on this yeah. because we really created a wonderful piece of literature. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Well, it's not anyone that can write. I'm sorry? How does the translation change for the final product? I mean, how much did the Do paper come to you? It wasn't much. It was just here and there where it would, uh, you know, where it would sound. Well, I'll yeah, leave that to you. Sometimes I think that we, you know, we knew that you were trying to get at something and we weren't sure it was exactly what you were, you know, yeah. you were saying what you meant. And so we would ask a question, you know, we would use the track changes and make a comment and send it back and ask a question. Sometimes I find that when you're really close to the work, it's really helpful to have those questions asked because it's a really like looking at it again from this more distance point of view, that's really helpful. Yeah, I, en I enjoy it too. I mean, I, as an editor of translated literature, from languages I don't always know, um, I, I find it a wonderful process and it's very enriching, you know, to see what you were, th you know, to hear what you were thinking, to hear what you were trying to get at and you're talking about how complicated these concepts are sometimes to translate. Um, 
and just to learn sort of what that process was. It was a very gratifying uh, process. I had a professor once who said um, in a kind of a sexist manner that a translation is like a woman. If she's faithful, she's not good. And if she's good, she's not faithful. So um, here we <laughs> have a writer, a translator, and an editor. How much of the original ends up in the final product? I mean, it's just you can't translate literally. Languages are all different. You know, it's like, you know, the, in the Eskimo language, there are 50 words for snow. In Ukrainian, there are many different words for blue, for example. And um, uh, how do you, is it most important to convey the message and the spirit of the work? Or is, is it important to be literate and translate the words themselves? I think it's definitely better to convey the spirit of the work and also to make it sound like a poem that somebody would read in English. Like if, if just, um, if we didn't have the Ukrainian here and an American reader picked it up and just saw the English, would they really be um, in, enraptured by the poem itself? Or would they think, oh, this is a translation? So Right, I mean, I think there's a balancing act. Um, I think all translation is a balancing act and some translation lends itself more than other translation to lit, uh, literalness. Um, uh, and I think that Eastern European languages and, and Slavic languages in general ha um, are, are so different from English that there's a kind of process of abstraction that has to go on. This is at least my, my understanding. Um, maybe Roman can speak to this I, a little I bit. I always give an example. In, in Czech, there's a term, um, to je stará vesta. It's an old vest. And in English, there's a term that says old hat. It's old hat. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna write down it's an old vest because the English reader is simply not going to understand what that means. And ultimately, as a publisher, you have the the final product of the translation is to the uh, to the English speaking reader because if they can't relate to it, then the translation isn't worth it. And then we have our ca cameraman. <laughs> not professionally. Uh, fascinated by this. Uh, my question is not uh, necessarily literary. Uh, I, I was a history major, so. Um, <clears throat> but one thing I'm, I'm very curious about is uh, you live in the States. I don't know your personal circumstances, um, but what, one thing that's been fascinating to see is the, uh, I mean, obviously with uh, Ukraine being heightened, heightened awareness about Ukraine because of the war, uh, a heightened interest in Ukrainian culture. Uh, it seems to me, I mean, I see uh, Ukrainian bands touring, uh, Ukrainian football players playing in, in, in football leagues. Uh, it seems to be an effective front in the war of, of maintaining support for Ukraine. And I guess I'm curious uh, about your perspective on that. Do you feel that you're part of a front in the war? Of, or are you just an individual living your life uh, you know, uh, in the circumstances that life has presented, uh, but do you, f or, or do you feel a connection to this promotion of Ukrainian culture um, that is lending support? Because I, I think a lot of people, the perception of Ukraine has, has evolved a lot in the, in the last few years, um, seeing it more as a c country connected to the West than part of the former Soviet Union, you know, as a big blob <laughs> on the map. <laughs> Uh, in my opinion, that uh, the promotion of Ukrainian culture today in current time is very important because uh, Ukraine needs support, uh, first of all, weapon, and needs um, understanding for, uh, from Western world, what is a country, what is a culture, what is a history. 
Uh, and every Ukrainian book translated in the other language, every concert, every exhibit, uh, I think that it's an uh, art front. Uh, and many people who don't understand in that uh, what is the Ukrainians and Ukraine in general, right now open his eyes and mind and thinking, okay, what is the nation who uh, right now want to independence and uh, provide struggle against Russia? Russia is an imperial, right? It's the biggest country of the world that country who has nuclear weapon, the country probably with a great cultural, yes? And what is that Ukraine, the small country? Uh, yeah, it's very important. And I thank to everyone who came on this reading and I believe, I hope, that our conversation and uh, my poems uh, will be discovered for everyone, um, small details about Ukraine and Ukrainian people. That's a good note also to say that um, we're gonna have a book signing as we're wrapping up here and they'll both be happy to sign your books if, if you uh, would like to buy them. Thank you. I don't think so. I think we're good. We're done? Is that okay? Did yeah, you want to no. add to it? We're good. Yeah. Okay. Well, folks, thank you so much thank for so coming. Much. Thank you. For sale over there. Vasil Mahnov and Orlena Jennings will we'll be over there. Put this up. It's so wow. Oh.